Being is an important word in English. You will find it in many different situations, especially in written English. Learning how to use this word will help you to write with better style and clarity. So in this lesson, I will teach you the four main uses of being, including in the passive voice, as a gerund, in participle clauses, and in continuous tenses. There are exercises later in the lesson to help you practice, and there's also some useful vocabulary. So let's start. The first use of being is to talk about a person's temporary behavior. Here's an example. I went to visit a friend of mine one time. He's married and has a son who's about seven or eight years old. When I went to their house, the boy was busy playing video games. So he didn't say hi to me. He didn't want to talk. He just wanted to keep playing. So his mother said this to him. Sam, you are being rude to our guest. Come here and say hi to him. Notice that she said, you are being rude and not you are rude. If she had said, you are rude, that would mean you're a rude person, always. But here, she's saying, you're normally a good, polite kid, but right now, you're being rude. So that's a temporary behavior, and she wants him to change that. So the kid put away his video game controller, he came and said, hi, how are you? And we had a nice little chat. Now here, we see the present continuous tense because this is exactly what Sam's mother said in her own words. But if you want to report it indirectly, you can use the past continuous tense. Sam's mother told him that he was being rude to the guest. So you are being changes to he was being. When talking about the present, we say I am, you, we, they are, he, she, it is, and for the past, I was, he, she, it was, and you, we, they were. Here's another example. This is a conversation between a husband and wife. The wife says, the kitchen faucet has been dripping for a week now. Why don't you do something about it? Dripping means that water is falling off in drops. Usually when that happens, it makes an annoying, unpleasant sound. The husband says, yeah, yeah, I'll take care of it. And the wife responds, it's driving me nuts. That's an idiom. It means it's really irritating to me. I'm going mad because of it. Don't be so lazy. Fix that faucet. Now, this underlined sentence can be improved using being. Can you rewrite that sentence? Well, she can say, quit being so lazy and fix that faucet. That's a very common thing to say. Stop being so lazy would also be correct. At this point, the husband might ask, are you saying I'm a lazy guy? To which the wife would reply, no, I'm just saying right now you're being lazy, so could you please stop being lazy and fix the faucet? Here are some more common sentences. Quit being such a baby. If a friend of yours is always whining and complaining, you're just being silly. Why is she being so stubborn? Stubborn means she won't change her mind. She wants to have things her way. Stop being negative. Learn to think positively. That waiter was being a real jerk, so we got up and left the restaurant. Jerk is a slang term for someone who is rude. In all these sentences, you see that being talks about a person's temporary behavior. That's the first use. The second use of being is as a gerund. That means a verb form that acts as a noun. Here's a conversation I had recently with a young student of mine named Rahul. Rahul asked, Teacher, what did you want to be when you were a child? I said, as a child, I first wanted to be a pilot, but as a teenager, I dreamt of being a rock star. Rock star means a famous singer of rock music. Of course, I ended up becoming a teacher. Ended up means that's what finally happened. Rahul asked, do you like being a teacher? I replied, being a teacher is a lot of hard work, but I believe it's much more rewarding than being a celebrity. Rewarding means satisfying. A celebrity is a famous person. Of course, I wouldn't mind being famous, but fame is certainly no substitute for fulfillment. We see a lot of beings here. They're all gerunds. 
The first is, as a teenager, I dreamt of being a rock star. Here, being a rock star means my dream was the life of a rock star. I said that a gerund is a verb form that acts as a noun. So this gerund is used in the place of the noun life. And then Rahul asks, do you like being a teacher? That is, do you like the job of a teacher? And I say, being a teacher, that is, the job of a teacher, is a lot of hard work but I believe it's much more rewarding than being a celebrity, than the life of a celebrity. So I'm saying that the job of a teacher is more fulfilling than the fancy life of a celebrity. Of course, I wouldn't mind being famous, that is, I wouldn't mind having fame, but that fame is no substitute for fulfillment. So then I asked Rahul, what do you want to become? He said, I want to be an aerospace engineer. I have a lot of studying to do. So I reminded him, okay, but being a good student doesn't mean you have to study all the time. It's good to get out in nature or go hang out with your friends once in a while. So this is the second use of being as a gerund. The third and a very common use is in the passive voice. I remember when I went on vacation with my family one time. We checked into our hotel, but the room wasn't ready yet. The receptionist said this to me. Your room is being prepared, sir. It'll be ready in just a few minutes. As it turned out, uh, they took almost an hour, for which time we had to wait in the lobby. But look at that first sentence. Your room is being prepared. This is the same as saying our housekeeping staff are preparing your room right now. This is an active voice sentence. Of course, the focus doesn't need to be on the staff, on the room attendants who are actually doing the cleaning. The room itself is the important thing here, and so the receptionist said, your room is being prepared. That's a better sentence. Now, looking back at the experience, I can say, we had to wait in the lobby for close to an hour because our room was being prepared. This is another passive voice sentence, but it's in the past continuous tense. So is being has changed to was being. One more example. I read this one in a novel recently. As they were driving home late that night, Shirley leaned in towards her sister who was behind the wheel. The wheel is the steering wheel. So behind the wheel means her sister was driving and whispered, I think we're being followed. So maybe she saw another car in the rear view mirror and that car had been following them for a while. This sentence means the same thing as in the active voice, I think somebody is following us. Now let's convert this to the past tense. Shirley told her sister that she thought they, and then how would you finish this sentence? She thought they were being followed. Our being has become were being. So using being in the passive voice is simply a matter of choosing am, is, are, was, or were, and then putting being after it, followed by the main verb like prepare or follow in the past participle or V3 form. We'll see more examples in the exercise later. The final use of being is in participle clauses. Don't worry if you don't know what that means. Take this example. I'm afraid of heights, so I try to avoid going up tall buildings. There's a little clue for us here. Notice the verb am in I am afraid. This is a form of the verb be. So we can actually connect these two sentences in a better way. Being afraid of heights, I try to avoid going up tall buildings. That first part, being afraid of heights, is called a participle clause. In this example, think of it like saying, because I'm afraid of heights. The participle clause makes your writing more compact and stylish. Okay, here's another one said by a different person. I'm not afraid of heights, so I have no problem going up to the top floors of tall buildings or even climbing mountains. Can you rewrite this with being? Well, you can say, not being afraid of heights, I have no problem going up to the top floors and so on. Here's another example. Mr. Adams, who is an avid reader, maintains a huge personal library of books and periodicals on various subjects. An avid reader is someone who loves books and reads a lot. How can we rewrite this with being? 
Well, Mr. Adams, being an avid reader, maintains a huge personal library of books and periodicals. Notice how the relative clause with who interrupts the sentence to give information about the noun, Mr. Adams. In the same way, the participle clause with being comes in the middle of the sentence and gives information. But the advantage with this is that you can move it to the beginning of the sentence. Being an avid reader, Mr. Adams maintains a huge personal library. It means the same thing as the original sentence. Now you might be thinking, in the first example, being afraid of heights, can we move that participle clause to the middle of the sentence? Well, you can say, I being afraid of heights try to avoid tall buildings. Grammatically, it's okay, but it doesn't sound very natural in this case. So we're just going to leave it like that. Okay, if you're ready, let's now do some practice exercises. All right, we've looked at the four main uses of being, and now we're going to try to put that into practice. I have 13 exercises for you here. In each one, I'm going to give you a sentence, and I want you to rewrite that using being. All right, here's the first one. All fruits and vegetables need to be washed thoroughly before we eat them. I want you to rewrite this underlined part using being. So how would you do it? You can say, all fruits and vegetables need to be washed thoroughly before being eaten. Now you can say before being eaten by us, but that's not necessary. This is a passive voice construction and this is a much better sentence. All right, let's move on to exercise number two. You're going to need a couple of vocabulary items for this one. The first is socialize. To socialize means to spend time with other people talking in a friendly way, uh, like how you would do in a party when you mingle with a lot of people. An extrovert is a confident person who enjoys social situations. The opposite is introvert, a person that doesn't like to mingle with others, someone who likes to be by themselves all alone. All right, so here's the sentence. I love socializing, meeting new people, and doing group activities. That's because I'm an extrovert. So rewrite this part using being. Okay, here's the answer. Being an extrovert, I love socializing, meeting new people, and doing group activities. So you see that I've brought this sentence over here to the beginning as a participle clause using being. Okay, exercise number three. This is the only vocabulary item you'll need for this. To micromanage means to control every little detail of an employee's work, and it's usually used in a negative sense, like when a manager or a boss tries to control every little thing that a worker does and not allowing them to work independently. Okay, here's the sentence. As a boss, you have to let your team members work independently. Most people don't like it when you micromanage them. So how can you rewrite this? We can say, as a boss, you have to let your team members work independently. Most people don't like being micromanaged. I haven't said being micromanaged by their boss because that's understood. So. Writing it in the passive voice like this allows us to leave out that unnecessary information. Okay, we move on to exercise number four. We're going to need some vocabulary for this. Show up is a phrasal verb and it means to arrive at a place or event and join other people. So here's the sentence. Francis showed up to the party even though he wasn't invited. Now, you'll have to rewrite this using despite and being. So, how can you do that? Okay, here's the answer. Francis showed up to the party despite not being invited. So, the, the meaning here is that uh, Francis was not invited. His friends did not invite him to the party, but still, he came to the party. Now, you might be thinking, at least some of you might be thinking, do we need to say, even though he hadn't been 
invited and uh, here do we need to say despite not having been invited those are correct but you don't really need the past perfect tense here because the meaning is clear in both of these sentences and these are actually simpler so I like uh, keeping them like this and uh, this of course is uh, in my opinion this is better because it uses despite and being and it's a shorter sentence All right let's move on to number five now here's the sentence how long does milk milk last after you open it the question here is how long does it take for milk to spoil how long is milk good for after you open the container so how would you rewrite this the answer how long does milk last after being opened this is just like the first sentence uh, fruits and vegetables need to be washed before being eaten so this is also a a sentence which changes this clause to a passive voice clause all right number six it's hard to find and retain committed volunteers because nobody wants to work when they are not paid so how would you change this the answer it's hard to find and retain committed volunteers because nobody wants to work without being paid all right we move on to exercise number seven some workers are repainting my house so i'm staying at my sister's for a couple of weeks at my sister's means at my sister's place how would you rewrite it well here's the answer my house is being repainted so i'm staying at my sister's for a couple of weeks and you can tell just by reading this first sentence that it sounds very unnatural. So this is a classic case where you need the passive voice. This is the passive voice and the agent, some workers, the people who are doing the action are not mentioned because that's really just unnecessary information. So my house is being repainted. So I'm staying at my sister's for a couple of weeks. Number eight, you're going to need some vocabulary for this. Okay, the first item is burglar. A burglar is a criminal who enters a building illegally to steal things. To tiptoe means to walk quietly on your toes with your heels raised. So if, if these are your feet, it's when you walk like this so that other people can't hear you. A hallway is a passage inside a building with rooms on either side. So you'll see doors on either side of the hallway. All right, here's our sentence. The burglar tiptoed across the hallway. He was careful not to wake the residents. How can we rewrite it? All right, here's the answer. The burglar tiptoed across the hallway, being careful not to wake the residents. So being helps us to nicely combine the two sentences here. Okay, exercise number nine. Authorities are telling locals to stay indoors and avoid the sun as much as possible until the heat wave has ended. Heat wave means a period where there's an abnormally high heat, right, to the point where people's health can be affected. So how can we write this with being? Here's the answer. Locals are being told to stay indoors and avoid the sun as much as possible until the heat wave has ended. Uh, notice that we have left out authorities here. Locals are being told to stay indoors because it's understood that it's the government or government authorities who tell people to stay indoors. All right, let's move on to exercise 10. We have an idiom in the vocabulary section here. To shoot from the hip means to speak directly without thinking even if what you say offends people where this idiom comes from is if you've ever seen a western or cowboy movie where a cowboy would uh, have a gun on their hip and just pull it out and shoot it without aiming carefully so that's where this comes from if you shoot from the hip that means you're a person who uh, talks openly honestly and directly without thinking now if you're diplomatic then that means 
You're speaking without upsetting or offending others. You're speaking carefully, especially when you have to convey a, a negative message, like when you have to say no or refuse something. All right, so here's the sentence. Jody is a good worker, but she tends to shoot from the hip. She's not very good at saying things in a diplomatic manner. How would you rewrite it? Okay, here's the answer. Jody's a good worker, but she tends to shoot from the hip. She's not very good at being diplomatic. So being allows us to nicely um, shorten this entire clause into just two words. All right, exercise 11. We need a couple of vocabulary items here. Tax evasion, okay. This is uh, actually, tax evasion is a noun. To evade taxes is a verb. Tax evasion is the act of illegally avoiding paying taxes, like when you hide your income from the government. Repercussions are bad effects caused by an action, like tax evasion. So here's the sentence. This is going to be a little challenging. Too many people believe they can avoid paying their taxes and not get caught. However, the short-term reward just isn't worth the legal repercussions if one is found guilty of tax evasion. You need to rewrite uh, two um, clauses here using B. So stop the video and think about it, then continue. All right, here's the answer. Too many people believe they can avoid paying their taxes without being caught. However, the short-term reward just isn't worth the legal repercussions of being found guilty of tax evasion. Did you get that one right? All right, we move on to exercise number 12. For this, you'll need to know the word entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is a person who starts his or her own business. Here's the sentence. I decided to quit my job and start my own business because I hate it when other people tell me what to do. Running the business on my own was hard at first, but now that I'm used to it, I'm enjoying the lifestyle of an entrepreneur and I wouldn't dream of going back to work for someone else. How would you rewrite it? Okay, here's the answer. I decided to quit my job and start my own business because I hate being told what to do by other people. Running the business on my own was hard, was, uh, was hard at first, but now that I'm used to it, I'm enjoying being an entrepreneur and I wouldn't dream of going back to work for someone else. Did you get that one? All right, let's move on to the final exercise, number 13. For this, you'll need to know the word cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is electronic money that's used for buying and selling online and that's not produced by the government. The most popular cryptocurrency is Bitcoin. You may have heard of it. All right, here's the sentence. You notice that I haven't underlined anything here. That's because I want you to decide where you can use being in this final uh, exercise. Some monetary experts argue that criminals are using cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin in underground markets for illegal transactions and that these cryptocurrencies should therefore be banned. If you rewrite this correctly, uh, you will get a much more, uh, a much cleaner, a much shorter, and a much nicer looking sentence. So try it out. Okay, here's the answer. Some monetary experts argue that cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin are being used in underground markets for illegal transactions and should therefore be banned. Look at how much more compact this sentence is. That's because this uh, first part, criminals are using cryptocurrencies in underground markets, I've, I've changed that to a passive voice sentence. Some monetary experts argue that cryptocurrencies are being used in underground markets. So there's no mention of criminals here because that's understood. If somebody is using, say, Bitcoin for illegal activity, clearly that person is a criminal. The other advantage is, notice that in this sentence, we have these cryptocurrencies 
should therefore be banned. But here I've simply said and should therefore be banned because the subject is clear. The subject is cryptocurrencies. In the original sentence, if you remove this part, now there's a problem. When you say and should therefore be banned, there are two nouns here. There's criminals and then there's cryptocurrencies. Are you saying the criminal should be banned or the cryptocurrency should be banned? Your reader would understand because we don't really ban criminals. We, you know, the government arrests criminals. So they think about it and say, yeah, it's the cryptocurrencies that should be banned. But to avoid that confusion, you need to, you know, put this part here. But in this sentence, in the passive voice sentence, there's no mention of criminal, so there's no confusion. So being helps us to produce a much nicer sentence here. All right, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you did, give it a thumbs up and also hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. Happy learning as always, and I'll see you in another lesson soon.